is on the verge of war, one that will eclipse everything that came before it. Without the old gods to stop them, the Sorcerer Lords have risen to claim the rule of the universe, and the planes tremble in their wake. Yet, in the darkness, another evil power has awoken. The unhallowed are marching forth to poison and corrupt all the known life. As one of the Sorcerer Lords, will you unite the planes under a stern rule? Or will you let them rot and perish in chaos? Greetings, programs. My name's Wretch, and I'd like to welcome you to Planner Conquest, a 4X strategy game by Wastelands Interactive that released on Steam yesterday. And a lot of people are saying that this game is the spiritual successor to the Master of Magic series by Microprose. Now, I've never actually played a Master of Magic game. However, I did play the Master of Magic scenario that was added with Civ 2, and it was one of my favorite scenarios of that game, and I played a lot of Civ 2. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this game has to offer in the long run. I played a few turns, and man, guys, this is fun. It is extremely involved and looks like to have a ton of replay value. So I'm looking forward to going on an adventure of conquest with you guys, and hopefully we don't get wrecked. So let's go ahead and start a new game here. Now, in terms of this, my first initial impression when I looked at this was, okay, this gets to determine what kind of uh, mage lord we are, or sorcerer lord. These are actually the worlds we get to play in, and we can travel between. So this is similar to the world tree in Norse mythology. You've got the Prime Realm, the Fire Realm, Water Realm, going all the way to Paradise, which seemed interesting, and Shadow. Now, I kind of want to have an opportunity to show you guys everything in the game, depending on what happens, so we are going to go with all the planes. And you can choose the terrain type and land coverage. So, let's just mess around here. Uh, we've got Prime as Pangea. Let's go with Pangea for Earth and Shadow. We'll keep land coverage good there. In terms of fire, let's do two continents with 50%. And we'll do that with Paradise. Water, water will be islands with 30% land coverage. 90% land coverage for Earth, Earth Plane, just because that makes sense. And air, let's go with three continents and 50% land coverage. So, I think that looks good. Now, in terms of the planes themselves, this is your standard kind of uh, Terran world, the Prime. With fire, we'll get more uh, potential for production and power, but not a whole lot of food, because it all burns up. With water, lots of food because of bountiful wildlife, but not a lot of production. With Earth, lots of production, lots of gold, not a whole lot of food. You're kind of sensing a pattern here. With air, a lot of gold, but no production. Um, because it's a lot of gold because minerals excavated on this plane are very valuable. Paradise, not a whole lot of production, but a lot of food. This is the, this is the breadbasket plane. And Shadow, lots of power, lots of uh, potential for magey goodness, but... <laughs> no food really to speak of so we're gonna go with that and now we get to choose the specifics of the game we're gonna go with seven opponents now in terms of difficulty because this is kind of a new genre for me I love 4x but not anything that I have to do with spells and from what I saw the few turns that I did play we're gonna go with Mageling I think that's a good balance I normally play medium difficulty on these games but because I'm like Donnie from Big Lebowski, I'm out of my element. We'll go with the middle between complete noob and experienced player. World size. Um, select the size of planes. The bigger the maps, the higher the amount of possible opponents. We'll go ahead and keep medium since we're rocking out all the planes. Fast movement is on. Game speed. Now, neutrals are like the villages in Civilization, so we're going to keep those with, at, with common frequency. Uh, features are frequent. Those are gateways, nodes, ruins, dungeons. Uh, this is 
I, I can't wait to show you guys the game if you've never been familiar with the Master of Magic series because you're, you're in for a real treat. Especially if you like D&D &D and Civilization, this is, this is going to be your combo right here. Now we get to choose our faction. We've got the High Men, who are good at building. They have solid all-around units and no distinct weaknesses. However, their disadvantage is they can't really specialize their units, and they have no offensive spellcasting units. Grey Elves, um, they have additional power income from population, and they have extremely mobile armies. However, they have really frail units and slow population growth. The Orcs, and I love any game that has Orcs in it, they are strong, they have strong and quickly trained units, the ability to raid, and fast population growth, but they have no ranged units and they have poor research and magic capabilities, so they're very similar to the D&D &D Orcs, they're really good in the military, but once the Arcane kind of comes into play, they're at a definite disadvantage. Dwarves, they have very high production output, which you would expect, they're Dwarves, and they have powerful and tough units. Now their disadvantages is they have poor population growth and slow units. So they're kind of the, the tank race, I guess. Dark Elves, or Drow, um, if you're familiar with D&D at all. Um, large power income from population and they have magically skilled specialized units. Their disadvantages are they have very slow population growth, fragile units, and they provoke large unrest. So they're perpetually salty. Now, I'll go to the Unhallowed last, but we also have the Draconians, which are essentially the Dragonkin. All units can fly, and they have additional power income from the population. However, they have very slow population growth, units with smaller amounts of figures, and they have high unrest, because there's so few of them. Then you have the Mirrodents, which are bug people. Very low unrest and fast population growth, which is kind of a standard for bug races in uh, strategy games. However, they have bad magic skills, poor construction capabilities, and provoke large unrest in other races, because they're so unlike the others. And then you have the Unhallowed, which are the undead, the big baddies in the game. They have powerful, advanced units, no unrest, and a simplified economy. The disadvantages, however, they're at eternal war against the other lords, they can't have any subservient races, and they need corrupted tiles for their cities. From how I understand, if you want to play the Unhallowed, it is a completely different game than playing any of these other guys. So that's kind of interesting. Um, considering the fact this is going to be a, a playthrough and we kind of want to figure out all the mechanics of the game, we're going to go, unfortunately, with the High Men. That's, well, no, I don't want to go with that. That's not... Do a little bit of difficulty. Dwarves. I'm going to go with the Dark Elves. I like the Dark Elves. And here you can choose below the color. We're going to have to deal with population growth and fragile units and unrest, but what's life if not filled with difficulties? Now we can go through with pre-made lords here, or we can create our own. Um, let's. I haven't actually looked at the pre-made lords. Let's see what we got here. Marcus. Oh, that's cool. They have their own stats too. Warlord, Enlightened, and Mentor. Now, I want to play kind of a necromancer character, um, based off the my LARP persona, where I got my name from. So, let's see... Oh wow, summoning nine. And this will all come into... Necromancer, Heretic... Alright, that's exactly what I wanted to see. So we're going to create our own. And this is, this is our lord, this is our main character, which is something that I... I really dig. And despite the fact that he is a high, or I'm ruling Dark Elves, we're going to go with the Lich here. We're going to get a little bit of Sylvanas going. Kind of a reverse Sylvanas, as a matter of fact. And we're going to call our Lord the Wretch King. Because that just looks awesome. Now, in terms of magic circles, now look at this. This is what gives us a ton of replayability because this is like a character sheet um, for Mage the Ascension, if you're familiar with that tabletop RPG, where you can choose all of your magic circles that give you access to all kinds of different spells you can use during the game. 
and in battle. We've got destruction spheres, biomancy spheres. I don't want to go over all of them because that would be that would take the entire video. But in terms of what I want to do, we have 12 character creation points and we also have disciplines that give us overall buffs. Now these red here um, are basically disadvantages we can give ourselves over the game, but it gives us more character creation points. We've got Prude, and the cool thing about this game is we've got these question marks that are on almost every screen that explain stuff to you, which is awesome. And just the explanations for what the abilities are pop up every time you go over it with your mouse. It is very, very well made. So, in terms of a necromancer, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Death Sphere. And it looks like we have some stuff um, from what that one uh, necromancer had. Mastery of Death. Death spells are 15% cheaper to research and cast and are harder to resist. Adds additional starting spells. At least a 9 death required, so these go all the way up to 9. And Necromancer. Discipline allows the Sorcerer Lord to raise units killed in a victorious battle as zombies. Because everything's better with zombies. So let's go ahead and rock out our death to nine. And we're going to take a... Hmm. Let's see. Tyrant, Opulent, Prude, Heretic. This discipline reduces the Sorcerer Lord's power gain from religious buildings by 50%. In terms of the Wretch King, I think we should go with... Hmm... I don't know quite yet, but I do know I want to take Necromancer. And it looks like the only thing that I can to get Mastery of Death, I'm going to need to take one of the minus twos. Receives 10% pen penalty because he's opulent. Prude. We don't really want to do Prude. So let's go with Heretic, which what that does, it reduces a Sorcerer Lord's power gain from religious buildings by 50%. And I know this is probably the exact same as the uh, pre-made character, I think. Let me actually go ahead and check on that real quick. Yeah, Mastery of Death, Necromancer. Eh, I like my name better. So, oh... Holy crap! That looks like a Beholder. So, we'll stick with all of this. Why not? So here are our starting spells, guys. And because we have Mastery of Death, these are the maximum amount of spells. Now, if we were going into other spheres, like if I had a 3 or 4 in Destruction, I could choose 4 of the Tier 1 Destruction spells. And it's all dependent on your um, on your abilities, it's, which makes this this game so variable and a lot of replay value to try out stuff with different uh, characters and abilities. So we ha can take six. We can take the entire tier one necromance of the Death Sphere. So we'll do on Holy Weapon, and the combat from what I saw comes off very D and D ish. Uh, plus or 1d4 negative energy, extra damage. Um, weakness, damage penalty minus two, modifies to hit chance, minus two. Bloodletting, target starts bleeding, losing six health points each turn. Mind rack, will saving throws minus five, so it is very much D&D with the will saves. Bone aura gives piercing resistance plus 15. And, of course, the ability to raise skeletons, because, yes, always skeletons. Now, with Tier 2, we can hold undead. Target cannot move, attack, counterattack, or use abilities. Life Ward. Positive energy resistance, plus 15. Fortitude reflex, will save, plus 1. And modifies your armor class, plus 1, your AC. Raise zombies. Gotta raise zombies. Dark Rituals. Religious buildings effectiveness plus 100%, unrest plus 10%, but population growth minus 25%. So that would actually kind of remove our heretic ability. Unfortunately, population growth will further go down by 25%. Uh, corrupt, target tile becomes corrupted. 
black ice transforms plain, swamp, and forest into tundra. So we could actually do inflict some damage to people's resources, which is awesome. Now let's see what our tier one spell is. Raise mummies. Ooh. Cloak of fear. Target gains fear. Unit radiates a terrifying aura. Any enemy attacking must pass a will save or be unable to strike. Torpor. Target cannot move, attack, or use abilities until attacked. Spite of bile. 8d8 negative energy. I think we're going to go with that. Ghost touch. All melee attacks become touch attacks and ignore AC. And then false life. Max HP per unit plus 20. And then 2d6 of negative energy every turn. So let's go with the spit of bile. That's very wretch like. And let's go with corrupt, black ice, and life ward. I think that'll be good for a start. Playing as Unhallowed has a completely different flavor and strategy than playing any other living races. I like that. That um, has a very kind of Attack on Titan meets Shadow of the Colossus feel to it. Some features can give you unique rewards. And those guys holding the fort while the other two are going, Nope! Straight to the portal. So, here is the game screen. As you can see, very Civilization-ish. But I really like the art style. Now, here is our capital city. We'll double click on here, and as you can see, we got a lot of our normal stuff here. However, I am going to rename our capital to the Rook, which was where my uh, LARP persona hung out his fortress. So, And it actually is a tower, so it makes sense. Now, we've got over here on these tabs, well, we've got our city income our power, our food, this is how much they're providing to us, all right? And the resources available within the um, city area. And we've got citizens, we've got militia, no unrest currently, though I bet that will change. And we have the ability to train units. So we've got spinners. Spinners are the architect. Oh wow, this uh, is very small font of elven settlements and they are tasked with settling new towns. They are unarmored and vulnerable in battle. Producing this unit reduces the town's population by 1,000, so very similar to Civ. Thralls are prisoners and slaves forced to fight for their masters. They are under-equipped and hardly more than meat shields, but cheap and quick to train. Wardens are light infantry to the Dark Elves. They wear no armor, using their agility to evade enemy blows and fight with two enchanted life-draining whips. Ooh. Enforcers provide range support for the armies of the Dark Elves. They are armed with metal crossbows. Zealots are Dark Elven Cavalry. Armed with lances and protected by breastplates, they ride upon gigantic venomous spiders. They can easily scale castle walls and arachnomancers so look at all this stuff man this is awesome we can also construct buildings such as housing trade goods and uh, then we have the armory the palisade farmers market miners guild sages guild sawmill now one of the cool things we already have zealots enforcers wardens and thralls we have a starting army and in terms of owned buildings and this is something I really liked when I first saw this we apparently already have I think don't quote me on this all of these are already built so our capital already has infrastructure which is awesome so what we're going to do here is in the construct buildings where is it right here we can set the capital to auto build and right here, a lot of this I'll have to explain um, as the situation warrants it. But here's our population right here, the plane that we're on, our capital. And I forget what that means, but actually, let's uh, see. There it is. Every time you summon a unit, it will be summoned to this city. So we have a summoner circle already here. So if we ever have to summon units for whatever reason, they'll show up here at the Rook. So, 
Let's go ahead and auto build. And it looks like we are building a sawmill. Awesome. So here are our, here's our awesome spider cavalry. And we have some treasure chests here. And looks, these are essentially dungeons and counters that we can go and basically see what's going on. So in terms of unit orders, um, let's look here. If we can separate these guys at all. Thralls. Unit orders. I like that music, very fable-ish. Army orders and unit orders. So if I go... Ah! Unit info. So... Hit points. We can disband the stuff if we feel so inclined. Movement, melee, fortitude save. Ranged. Average damage the unit inflicts when using a ranged attack. And that also lets us know abilities, which is awesome. And armor class. Hmm. Wardens have a drain life ability, which is cool. Zealots have charge, venomous, swamp, drill, or swamp dweller, spell resistance. Lots of good stuff here. Now, I'm not exactly sure how we split the army up. But, at the moment... Experience cache. This ornamental chest contains some scrolls of learning. These parchments can contain knowledge that can boost units' proficiency in battle. We also... Oh, we need to choose a spell to research. Forgot about that. Recall hero or dispel magic. And as you can see, in terms of the spells, those are the tier... Um, how much research points these are going to cost, which for these ones up here would be 60. And that's pretty self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and learn Dispel Magic, because that's always handy, I, I find. And looks like we can do more, but for right now, let's just research one spell at a time. And we can keep on moving with our spiders. Ancient ruins. Many civilizations have risen and fallen in this realm. These ruins are remain run of them, once a thriving metropolis now reduced to units and rubble and infested by monsters. A settler might be able to found a new city here reusing some of the remnants. Ooh. That's kind of cool. But for right now, let's, uh send our spider over here to raid some chests and as you can see there's tons of stuff to do so let's wait for the other players and in terms of now a lot of this stuff I'm gonna have to experiment with off-camera to see how exactly we split armies up and things of that nature Gold chest, 12 gold. This ornamental chest contains a small quantity of ancient coins, trinkets, and other valuables that can be sold for gold. And looks like we have a watchtower here. Oh, we got a camp as well. Let's see what's going on here at this camp. Forgotten camp. Achievement unlocked dungeon master. Nice. The camp is abandoned. However, your troops managed to find a hidden treasure cache. Our cash. Awesome. And we've got engineers, whatever that entails. Let's check all along the watchtower here. This tower was built in more recent times. It's still in very good shape, and its height makes it perfect lookout spot for watchmen. However, it's been invaded by a raid of band of raiders who will not abandon it peacefully. And the threat is high. So we need at least one movement point to interact with that, but I want to go somewhere a little less dangerous. Let's try that arena. So how cool is this? And actually, let's see here. Mirror, diplomacy, army info. Okay. 
Movement points. Unit ability. Skip unit. Split army. Army orders. Ah! That's what I wanted to do. So we'll put the engineers over here as well as the thralls. Because I want the thralls to uh, be hanging out for... At base, just in case something bad happens. So... Let's go ahead and send them there. In terms of you guys, we can build roads. So the engineers are the creators of infrastructure. I like that. And it looks like maybe we can build a town as well. Let's head over to this tower. And it's also letting us explore. Ooh. Look at all this stuff, guys. Holy crap. This is going to be fun. I'm probably going to get completely and utterly smited, but we're going to have fun while doing it. Not much remains of this once powerful stronghold. Everything on the surface has been reduced to ruins. The dungeon, however, resisted the passage of time and now are inhabited by a band of monsters or bandits. Raiders and werewolves. Oh my. But there's a chest right here. Nine gold. And we can see what... So do we... Let's try the portal. Air gateway. This place is an intersection between two planes. Magical forces flow freely here from one world to another and back. This rare occurrence allows armies to cross through the aether into the plane of air. Ah. Alright. That's awesome. Um, It doesn't look like I can move anymore, so... Let's end the turn. I'm going to split this army up as well. Put our engineer over here. And what can you do? Purify tile, embark, build siphon, and build a road. Now, I'm kind of curious if we can um, automate our engineers. Because that is uh, kind of interesting to me. Purify, build road. Hmm. Interesting. So I want you to fortify there, soldier. Now, as far as you go... Ah! No, that's not what I wanted you to do. Ah, the learning curve. There we go. Build road. I guess we'll have to uh, work with you a little bit later, my friend. In the meantime, let's go ahead and end the turn. And we know that that's the air portal, if we so inclined to figure out what's going on. Earth node. Pierce through the aether and now flow here. Build a siphon to harvest these energies for a magical power. Hill giant slimes and earth ellies. Oh, look at that chest floating in the, air, floating in the water. That's awesome. Just exploring all the dangers around the Rook. Because we got these two towers and whatever that thing is. And we got another chest that's moving about. Now, in terms of our engineers here, what do you do? Build road. Corruptile. So there, we, there's really, like, no mines or anything we can do yet, is there? Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and uh, just start building roads around the Rook, I suppose. Now, as far as you go, my friend, you've already moved. And I just want you to fortify. And stay fortified. Use this ability when on a coastal title to embark on a ship. Embarking on a ship allows your enemies to move or allows your armies to move across water. Huh. Yeah, uh, this is this is so awesome. Alright, guys. Well, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to end the episode here, and we come back, we'll keep exploring these lower areas, and we may get into a bit of combat. Um, I hope you guys are liking this. This game is available on Steam right now, and it's on sale for $20. So if you want to grab this, I strongly suggest getting it. As you can see, 
It is a ton of fun already. But if you liked the video, please leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.